D, wait for it. Wait for it. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. What's up, nerds? And welcome to my week in review where I come to you every Sunday with three entertainment stories that I personally find interesting, and then we discuss them down below. Now, also down below is the articles that I read to bring you this video, and you can read them yourself and come up with your own opinion or whatnot, or just watch this video, because uh, I'm going to break them all down for you and read some of the articles to you. <clears throat> And, uh, and yeah, you just go home with your day. Now, before I get started, though, I just want to say that if you like what I do here and you enjoy independent content here on YouTube, please consider subscribing to my channel. YouTube is constantly changing up their algorithm and small channels like myself usually get pushed to the back of the line. So I please ask that you like, share and subscribe. And I thank you in advance. So why don't we go ahead and get started? So for my first uh, story of this week uh, is kind of a little bit of a doozy. So Justin uh, Helpner, Helperner, Helpern, Helpern, and Patrick uh, Schumacher, I think that's how you say their names. They are the co-creators of the Harley Quinn animated show for HBO Max. It used to be DC Universe, but now it's HBO Max because, you know, DC Universe didn't get anything. Now, the Harley Quinn animated show uh, stars, you know, Harley Quinn, which is voiced by Kaylee Cuoco. <clears throat> And in an uh, interview with Variety, they talked about uh, an oral sex scene on the show uh, that DC and uh, uh, Warner Brothers said no to. They were like, no, you can't have that in there. And I'll, I'll, I'll read the quote in just one second. Um, and uh, it, had a, it, had, it detailed Batman going down on Catwoman. And so this is what um, I believe it was Justin... Helpern, Helpern said, um, he said, Harley Quinn is also unique among the current crop of comic content in that its main character and all the uh, all her closest allies are villains rather than heroes in the DC canon. That allows the show to do <clears throat> different things with characters that heroes simply cannot do, at least according to DC. It's incredibly uh, gratifying to free and free to be uh, using characters that are considered villains because you just have so much more uh, leeway, says uh, Helpner, and it was Helpner. A perfect example of that is in this third season of Harley uh, when we had a moment where Batman was going down on Catwoman and DC was like, you can't do that. You absolutely cannot do that. They're like, heroes don't do that, so... So we said, are you saying heroes are just selfish lovers? They were like, no, it's that we sell co uh, consumer toys uh, for heroes. It's hard to sell a toy with Batman is also going down on someone. Um, and in fairness to DC, uh, both Helpner and Schumacher went on to say that the company has been remarkably supportive of their series and has allowed them to push the envelope uh, numerous times still. It remains to be seen if Batman and Catwoman will be shown engaging in some bedroom act, uh, antics in season three or if it will simply be implied via cunning uh, logistics. Now, I have to say right now, um, I'm glad that they told them no. Um, I mean, like, listen, obviously sex is a part of life, but I just have to say that I think that I think that having Batman go down on, on Catwoman is is a dumb idea. It's 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 stupid. It's 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 like awful and tacky. It's such a tacky idea. And this is why. If you remember Batman having sex with Batgirl and the killing joke, I mean, that did not go over well. And like me personally, I'm fine with sex jokes, but I mean, like oral sex, the oral sex idea sounds like they were just being over the top and crude and just being crude for crude sake. Like they were just doing it just because they could. And I, I think that someone should have told uh, Bruce Tim and the people that were doing the killing joke know when it came to that sex scene with Batgirl because it did not go over well. I mean, like he had sex with a girl, a woman that he had basically uh, was her boss. And, you know, and then there's that power dynamic. 
And it just, it di- didn't go over well. Nobody thinks it went over well. And if you do, you're just crazy. But it's just, it's so crazy that uh, people would be okay with this. I mean, some people were, were weighing in on it and saying that it was fine. Me personally, I just think it's, it's better that it's not in there. And sometimes you need to be told no, because that gets the brain juices flowing. Because then you have to, you know, uh, you know, reconfigure stuff. You have to take a step back and, uh, and do something else with that. So I I'm glad. I mean, if it's in there, it's like whatever. I love Harley Quinn, the the animated series. It's really great. And they and they tried to say like, oh, this is a show for adults. This is not for kids. And that's true. But I mean, I'm not coming to see this show to I mean, like if you did have a sex scene in there, it'd be fine. But I mean, like you didn't have it in seasons one and two. And if you do, I don't remember. But I'm not coming to see that. I'm coming to see Harley like f shit up. I don't know. I don't know why. So, uh, so there, yeah, there's that. And and a lot of people did weigh in on it, and it was super fun on Twitter. Except as soon as I did that, I seen a whole bunch of like all of a sudden everybody just started pulling out stuff from the comic books of people having sex and like, and especially Batman and Catwoman. I'm just like, why am I seeing this in my timeline? You guys need to calm it down. Like this is ridiculous. So that is my first story of this week. Uh, So for my second story of this week, so the Beauty and the Beast prequel uh, is going to be coming out and that's going to be starring Luke Evans as Gaston and uh, Josh Gad as LeFou. Now, uh, this movie is, like I said, is going to be a prequel and it'll be set in the events before uh, uh, Beauty and the Beast. Um, And so they have cast Brianna Middleton in this movie as the lead female, Tilly, who is LeFou's stepsister. So um, if you don't know who Brianna Middleton is, because I don't, Middleton, I don't know who she is, uh, uh, Middleton, sorry, uh, who she is, but she was in uh, movies like The uh, tinder bar and uh, oh that's a short she's in a lot of shorts but the tinder bar uh or the tender bar looks like the only movie she's been in so uh this is probably her big break so but yeah just to read you what this movie is about this is set in the iconic kingdom of beauty and the beast years before beast and bell's epic romance this series will follow gaston and lefou as they set off with lefou's stepsister tilly After a surprising revelation from her past comes to light, sending the unlikely trio off on an unexpected journey filled with romance, comedy, and adventure. While the mysteries of the past are uncovered and dangers of the uh, present grow, all old friends and new enemies reveal that this familiar kingdom harbors many secrets. And um, so Brianna Middleton uh, is uh, black. And, uh, you know, of course, she has to be the stepsister because if it was sister, that'd be weird. Um, and I think that she's going to be the main character of this movie. And it sounds stupid. I thought Beauty and the Beast was not good. Uh, and I have no desire to see this. Uh, I, this is, this is a tokenism. I'm sorry. I'm just going to call it for what it is. It's tokenism. Uh, they're just like, Hey, we need to get some, some diversity in this. So let's just throw a black girl in there and make her the main character. I mean, this sounds like basically like Gaston and LeFou are going to try to help out this girl, but Gaston is not a hero. And that's the thing. They're going to try to make this into like, you feel sympathetic. It's like they did kind of with Cruella. Like you feel sympathetic for a villain. And even though I liked Cruella, uh, this is just not, <laughs> this sounds awful. I'm not going to watch this. I'll tell you that right now. It's, it just sounds so stupid. Um, but I mean, you know, it's like, whatever. I mean, what are you going to do? Um, yeah, I mean like Josh Gad put this idea out there and they, they greenlit it and everything, but I think that, uh, it just, <laughs> it just sounds so stupid. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to watch this. I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't care. I don't care about this. I mean, if you do, good for you, but I have no desire to uh, to see this and everything. So that is my uh, second story of the week. So for my third and final story of the week, Zoe Kravitz is making her directorial debut um, for the movie uh, Pussy Island, and it will be starring Channing Tatum. Channing Tatum. 
And, uh, you know, <laughs> the title is very crazy, but I'll get into the, to that and everything. We're going to read some quotes in here. Uh, but I just want to say, like, if you don't know who Zoe Kravitz is, she's going to be playing Catwoman um, in uh, uh, the new Batman movie, which sounds like uh, it's got some problems on its own. Uh, I personally wouldn't have cast Zoe Kravitz, but whatever. And then you've got uh, she was in X-Men First Class. And then she was also um, in Mad Max Fury Road. I mean, she had a very brief uh, the thing. Uh, the last thing I uh, she was in, uh, she's in like High Fidelity, which sucked. And then she's also in, uh, oh gosh, what's that one with Nicole Kidman on HBO? It doesn't even matter. Anyways, uh, Channing Tatum, you might remember him from G.I. Joe, Step Up, and of course, Magic Mike. Now, uh, this movie, uh, Kravitz did co-write and here's the description for the movie. Okay, so it says, uh, Frida, which I believe Zoe Kravitz is going to play, is a young, clever Los Angeles cocktail waitress who has her eyes set on the prize. Uh, philanthropist and tech mogul Slater King, which will be played by Channing, Channing Tatum. Uh, when she skillfully maneuvers her way into King's inner circle and ultimately an intimate gathering on his private island, she is ready for a journey of a lifetime despite the epic setting, beautiful people, ever flowing champagne and late night dance parties. Frida can sense that there's more to this island than meets the eye, something she can't quite put her finger on, something that is a bit terrifying. Uh, so, uh, and this is supposed to be a thriller. So I'm just assuming, you know, like, Ooh, it's all bad and everything. Channing Tatum is a horrible person. So in this article, she went on and they, they, uh, they asked her about the title. So, and she said, the title means a lot of things. Kravik said, I started writing this story in 2017 as a woman in general and a woman in this industry. I've experienced some pretty wild behavior from the opposite sex. Uh, the title was kind of a joke at first, this place where people would go, bring women, party, and hang out. The story evolved into something else, but the title wound up having multiple meetings. I don't understand how it could have multiple meanings. I mean, like, maybe like pussy isn't scared uh, besides just, you know, a vagina. And it alludes to this time and place we claim to not be in anymore in terms of sexual politics. People are evolving and changing, but there is still a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths from uh, past behavior or, you know, dirty island. Anyways, uh, it's a nod to that, but it's also playful and a really playful film <laughs> in a lot of ways. I like that the title leads with uh, that and has some heavy meaning uh, beneath it. Kravitz got writing and producing experience on High Fidelity, which sucked. I'll tell you that right now. If you ever watch that show, that show sucks. Go watch the movie. The movie's way better. The show is, is pure shit. So it's obvious that, uh, you know, anyways, which she called an incredible education in storytelling, which means this movie is probably going to be shit. Uh, this is my first feature and it's taken many years to get to this point. And I'm very excited to step into this new phase. There's absolutely a thriller element to the film, but it has comedy, drama and real heart at heart. The, at heart through it's a genre thriller. She drilled down. Uh, she drilled down on Ta uh, Tatum to play the key character of the tech billionaire, and they've developed the script together, uh, uh, honing that the character along with the heroine. Kravitz said, "For the female lead, she tried to write a role that would be a dream for her to play, with the re resolve to give it to another actress so she can fully focus on directing a film that will begin production early next year." on an undisclosed tropical island. Okay, so maybe she won't play it. I have a feeling she's going to play it. These actors and actresses, their their heads are too big. They can't, and their egos, they can't just not play a character in their first directorial debut movie. Anyways, Chan, uh, Chan was my first choice. The one I thought of when I wrote this character, Kravitz said. I just knew from Magic Mike and his live shows, I got the sense he's a true feminist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm s let me read that again <laughs> I just knew from from Magic Mike and his live shows I got the sense that he was a true feminist <gasps> from Magic Mike oh god you're so stupid anyways <laughs> 
he was a true feminist and I wanted to collaborate with someone who was clearly interested in exploring this subject matter. Oh, Tatum said he was shocked when Kravitz called. Of course he was. He should be shocked that anybody has him in mind for anything uh, called with that offer because he's not usually offered roles like that. And because it felt like a challenge to wade into a perilous area of gender politics. Of course, it sounds like a challenge. You're stupid and you can't act. So it's going to be a real challenge for you to muster up some kind of talent there. Um, It's terrifying to talk about anything when you start putting uh, your toes over the line and talking about men and women today as things are starting to bubble to the surface and everybody uh, is starting to have accountability, Tatum told Deadline. When Zoe called me about this, I was shocked. I didn't know her. I'd watched her in movies, knew she produced High Fidelity and had seen it, that, but I didn't know he had seen that. No, and then, I mean, yeah, him and me and like two other people. That's why I got canceled. Uh, no, she was creating on a level like this where she wanted to direct this came out of nowhere and the subject matter made me say wait why are you thinking about me for this no one gives me a chance to play a role like this everybody throws me down a different alley and expects me to do a certain thing Um, it was scary and liberating just to be able to have a free conversation where I was allowed to mess up and say the wrong things Um, It became less about men and women and on more of a human thing (laughs) that will open people's eyes rather than us drawing lines in the sand, Uh, sand, uh, the you're a man, I'm a woman, it's against you thing. Uh, This goes deeper in a direction. I'm, oh, this sounds awful. People receiving this. Okay, so. Uh, I'm not going to read the rest of this. I'll just, because they go on, she goes on to, hold on. I want to read this because this was fun about this article. And she says, uh, and how far you are willing to push yourself to get to the thing you want for me that uh, supersedes gender, race, religion, creed. Like uh, she goes on to say like, this is about that stuff altogether. And I'm all like, listen, uh, you, you got two, of the most mediocre people in Hollywood. I mean, Channing Tatum, I mean, he's just a potato. I mean, he's got the the brain power of a potato. The only reason you hire him is for him to take off his shirt. You do not hire him for anything else. His acting ability is like not even mediocre at best. It just sucks. And Zoe Kravitz is not that talented. I mean, she's okay at best. I mean, she's like everything you see her in, nothing makes you think, nothing makes everything she's in. You don't want more of her. That's, that's the whole thing. I mean, they, they killed her off in the Fantastic Beast franchise because she was boring as shit and high fidelity sucked. Uh, they killed her character off in, in X-Men because that character sucks. Nobody wants to see that character. Like nobody, nobody's looking for Zoe Kravitz and they just keep putting her in. Channing Tatum, the only reason they want you in this movie is because you're good looking and you've got a hot body. That's the only reason. Him all like, this is a challenge. Yeah, it's going to be a freaking challenge, dude, because you can't act. <laughs> so so get ready for this mess. This is going to be a mess. This movie's going to suck. I can tell you that right now. It's going to suck balls and not in the good way. So that's my last story. (laughs) Oh gosh, that, that, uh, oh gosh, this makes me laugh. Anyways. So those are my three stories of this week. Tell me, what do you guys think about this? Um, how do you feel about this whole oral sex thing with Batman and Catwoman in uh, Harley Quinn? Are you for it? Are you against it? Are you like me and you just think it's they're just doing it for for shock value and that's all they're doing it for? They're not. Tr- it's 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 just because they're all like, oh hey, what can we do here? Oh yeah, just have Batman go down on Catwoman. Or are you somebody that's like, no, uh, I think they should push the envelope in this direction. Even though I don't, I don't really think it's pushing the envelope, but whatever. Or you know what not. Um, how do you feel about Brianna uh, Middleton uh, being cast as Tilly uh, in the Beauty and the Beast movie? I mean, are you like me? I just think it's tokenism and she's going to be, this isn't a, a, a Gaston and LeFou movie. It's, it's, a, it's a Tilly, uh, Brianna Middleton Tilly movie. And they're just, these two are just side characters uh, in this movie. And, uh, and like, they're talking about romance. What is Gaston going to fall in love with Tilly? He's not a good person. And it's it's it, Gaston's not a good guy, and you're if you're trying to make him sympathetic, it's so that's a stupid idea too. And like 
and you're just gonna have LeFou pining over Gaston the whole time. Uh, it sounds like a bad, this sounds like awful movie. It sounds so stupid. And then how do you feel about Zoe Kravitz and Channing Tatum? Or Zoe Kravitz directing for the first time. Good for her that she's directing. Uh, it's this movie and Channing Tatum, you know, good for him. I, I wish nothing but the best for people, but this movie sounds freaking awful. And they, they just sound so stupid when they talk like this, this whole movie sounds like a big freaking mess. And, uh, I love that. She's like, it took many years to write it. Yeah. Cause you had to hone in this stupid idea. Like this sounds so freaking dumb. It's, it's, oh, this is a good mess. This is a good mess. I I'll probably watch it just so I can uh, talk about how dumb it is. So tell me what do you guys think about this? You can go ahead and leave all your comments in that section down below. If you like this video, go and hit that like button. You know I won't mind. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys on my next uh, week in review. You guys have a good week. Bye. Hey nerds, if you like this video, go ahead and click that eat what icon and subscribe. And if you like this video, go ahead and join me every Sunday with my week in review.